space is huge, and it is as infinite as it is beautiful. Everything is perfect, amazing geometry of impeccable shapes of any scale. And one of the brightest examples is right here on this side. Even the smallest children recognize this planet. Thanks to the Cassini mission, we have received many breathtaking images of Saturn rings from different angles. With bated breath, we imagine how this aesthetic sight would look in real life if we were on Saturn. It's a shame that the universe decided to show us this dazzling beauty only from afar. But what if our planet could also have rings? Maybe our dream comes true one day, and we'll even witness this great event. But it raises some questions. How quickly will we regret our dream's fulfillment and begin to beg fate to return everything back? if the Earth had rings. In 1610, Saturn and its rings were first observed by Galileo Galilei, but he couldn't see the rings around the planet. His signature 20 times telescope was a landmark invention of its time, but fell short even of modern smartphones. The great astronomer described what he saw as strange appendages on the sides of the planet. Galileo needed to name this phenomenon, and so he came up with an anagram. Don't try to read it for fear of calling the devil himself. The anagram stands for, I have observed the most distant planet to have a triple form. A few decades later, another great astronomer, Christian Huygens, upgraded Galileo's telescope, creating his own device with a 50 times magnification. So it was beyond doubt that Saturn was surrounded by a ring. And as late as 1675, Giovanni Domenico Cassini discovered at least two rings nested inside one another. Now we know for sure that there are a lot of these amazing structures. They consist of small ice particles, silicate dust, grains of sand, etc. Less often, one can come across asteroids and even Jupiter satellites. Yes, some of Jupiter's moons are right in the ring's plane. There are different theories as to where the rings came from. According to one, they formed simultaneously with the planet 4.5 billion years ago. Another one poses this is what's left of destroyed comets pulled by Saturn's gravity. The rings are located exactly in the equator's plane, and this applies not only to Saturn's rings. This occurs due to the fact that the planets are not perfectly spherical, but slightly flattened due to rotation. This makes only the equatorial orbit gravitationally stable. Saturn has many rings that move unevenly. That's why there are clear boundaries between them. It's currently estimated that the whole ring system is 400,000 kilometers wide and 5 to 30 meters thick excluding asteroids and satellites. We'll let that sink in, not kilometers, but meters. This is absolutely amazing, considering that 400,000 kilometers is a little more than the distance from the Earth to the Moon, and five meters is virtually a nuisance. Of course, that's very interesting, but we don't live on Saturn, so let's go back to our planet and we immediately face injustice. Saturn has huge rings. Uranus has a whole ring system. Neptune and Jupiter also have smaller rings. Even the dwarf planet Haumea. The asteroids Cariclo and Chiron have rings. The question arises, what is wrong with Earth? Why doesn't it have rings? The answer is, for no particular reason. It's just the way it is, because it didn't work out. It's nobody's fault. But perhaps they were before. 4.5 billion years ago, 
two planets collided. One was the size of the Earth, the other was the size of Mars. The second only tangentially touched the first, but the impact energy was enough for the small planet to collapse almost completely and impact the first one, scattering a lot of fragments nearby, which became the building blocks for a ring system around the planet. Then, a satellite of the first planet formed from the second planet's remnants and the matter from the rings. Have you already guessed? It's about the Earth and a hypothetical planet, Thea. This dramatic scenario gave rise to the giant impact theory, a common hypothesis on moon formation. This would all be really exciting if we had a time machine. But wait, what if Earth rings would suddenly appear right now? It might seem incredible. How could they after all? But at least this isn't against any laws of physics and the current alignment of forces in the solar system. Suppose a large asteroid will fly close to the Earth. It will be pulled by its gravity and gradually reach the Roche limit. This is the critical distance where the smaller body begins to fall apart due to tidal forces. Asteroid fragments would collide, breaking up into smaller pieces. They would gradually line up along the equator and form planetary rings. With some luck, it won't take long, and we won't have to invent immortality to see what happens next. Let's imagine that the rings have already formed, and humanity hasn't gone mad when astronomers were screaming about the approaching asteroid. How big could the rings be? To remain relatively stable, the rings need to be well above the exosphere, the lower boundary of the uppermost layer of our atmosphere, which is above 10,000 kilometers from the Earth's surface. Theoretically, the rings can extend farther for many tens of thousands of kilometers, but it's more likely that the rim of the Earth's rings will be less than 5,000 kilometers wide. The diameter of the entire system will be a little over 40,000 kilometers. This is far from the size of Saturn's rings, which are hundreds of thousands of kilometers. But when observed from Earth, it will still be something grandiose. Since the Earth's rings will be composed of silicate dust, grains of sand and pebbles, they won't shine as brightly as Saturn's ice rings. But believe me, it would be enough to instill a sense of awe. The rings will be visible from anywhere in the world, somewhere more, somewhere less, depending on the latitude of the observer. Even at the North and South Poles, a small arc of rings will be seen on the horizon. In temperate latitudes of both hemispheres, one will get the best view. For example, from New York, the rings will look like giant wide arches crossing the entire sky from the south side. And at the equator, the rings will be visible edge on right at the zenith, a smooth sparkling line from one horizon to the opposite at a right angle. This would be cooler than any laser show. An even more bizarre sight will be enjoyed from the equator at the equinox. The sun would go across the sky exactly at its zenith, and its disk will be divided exactly in half by a narrow strip of ring's edge. Crossed out in half by a black line, the sun would look like a gigantic lantern. The rings will be visible day and night. At night, the rings will glow like tens or hundreds of moons, reflecting the light of the setting sun. Except for the equator and the poles, most of the planet won't experience night as we know it. In clear weather, the rings will also be perfectly visible during the day. They would have the same silvery white hue as the daytime moon. But this is only a small part of the whole picture. The Earth will cast a shadow on the rings. During the day, one could observe the movement of the planet's shadow along the rings, tearing them apart in the middle. Or when looking from a different latitude, the observer could see the Earth's shadow biting off part of the rings. 
but there's far more to it. The real magic would happen when the sun passes through the sky behind the rings. Probably some areas won't completely overshadow the sun, but refract and scatter the rays. Passing through the ring's plane, sunlight can become orange or red as at sunset. Perhaps the most impressionable viewers have already thought, if only we could see this bizarre light show. But any astronomer would be horrified by such a prospect. And rightfully so, as this charming miracle has a very creepy downside. We found out that the ring system will form in the equator plane. But there we already have man-made rings, i.e. geostationary satellites. Here is how it looks in sensitive optics. So most likely, we'll lose satellites. Some of them will be destroyed by fragments, and some will leave orbit due to gravitational disturbances. If any remain, they are bound to malfunction. Satellite communications, television, meteorological observations, and much more may go down the drain. And not only won't we be able to launch new satellites, but we'll have no way of exploring space. But that's not a big deal. In the end, NASA will come up with something. Or we'll get grandmother's rotary phones from the closets and civilization will gradually go steampunk. Why not? But Earth rings will give us so much trouble that not only NASA, but even Chuck Norris couldn't cope with. For example, we all know how quickly it becomes cold once the twilight sets in. But even though it would take many years for rings to appear, we'll feel the first disturbing red flags as early as the first days. It will get really cold really fast. According to various estimates, two years after ring formation, winters on our planet will become twice as cold. The climate will be totally disrupted. This will entail not just another big extinction of species, Planetary rings will bring us a new ice age. Plants will die and oceans will freeze. Optimists might think that it's not all that bad. Over time, the rings would disappear and life on the planet would flourish with renewed vigor as it happened more than once in history. That's right, but there is a caveat. NASA scientists recently realized that Saturn's rings will definitely disappear in almost 100 million years. No one knows how long it would take for Earth's rings to. Do you still want to see Earth rings in real life? <laughs>